hi so in this part of the video we will look at uh, some more questions which are real exam questions of aws certified cloud practitioner exam and uh, believe me if you go through all of these videos you will definitely clear this uh, certification exam for people who are trying to prepare for the certification exam uh, do your preparation or if you do not have a lot of time to go through the contents please go through these questions i have clarified most of the concepts that uh, that will be asked in the exam so if you go through all of these 10 videos of aws certified cloud practitioner you will surely clear the exam okay now uh, if you like my videos please uh, that will be helpful uh, click like and subscribe to my channel because i'm going to post some more videos which will help you with clearing different certification exams uh, related to aws uh, azure and other cloud uh, products so let's jump straight to the questions the first one is which of the following services falls under the responsibility of the customer to maintain operating system configuration security patching and networking okay so let's look at the options you have rds ec2 elastic cache and forget when we talk about maintaining the operating systems configuration security patching ec2 is the place where you do that as a customer you will have to ensure that uh, the security patching and networking is in place rds is a uh, aws managed service so you don't have to do anything the customer doesn't do anything there from a configuration perspective or os configuration security patching perspective same with elastic cache and forget so hence option b is the right answer now let's see the next question which of the following is an important architectural design principle when designing cloud applications oh, so basically this is again a question on the best practices from a design standpoint let's look at these best practices and see which is the right one the use of multiple az's uh, this is potentially one but let's look at other options use tightly coupled components this is purely wrong so you should always use loosely coupled components not tightly coupled components so using open source software is not recommended so open source software has a risk that there might be any some of the security threats there may be some hidden code which may be risky so that is not a recommended best practice provision extra capacity so you don't need to provision extra capacity because cloud is meant for unlimited capacity and uh, cloud provides elasticity because of which you don't have to plan for capacity any any time so the from the best practice perspective uh, you should use multiple az's that is that is what looks to be right so a is the right answer so which aws support plan includes a dedicated technical account manager this is an interesting question and it's some, it's sometimes confusing so in this case the correct answer is enterprise because uh, i mean th there is no logic to it uh, this is just a service that is provided by aws and this doesn't come with basic business or developer so if you see this screen the, uh, this sheet gives you a comparison of uh, these uh, support plans between developer business and enterprise so let's look at the account management so here you have uh, technical account management uh, sorry I'll just click this piece. You have technical account management, and you see under enterprise, under this enterprise, you have this designate account manager available. So this is the right answer. So I usually, whenever I give justification, I also try to give evidence so that it is very much clear that the answers are right. So the correct answer in this case is enterprise. So let's look at this question. Um, Amazon RDS offers which of the following benefits over traditional database management? So whenever we see a uh, managed RDS instance, the one of the main benefit here is the maintenance. The maintenance is uh, uh, you know taken care of automatically. So one is a, what is the benefit? Let's look at the options. AWS manages the data stored in Amazon RDS tables. Uh, so this is no, this is not the key benefit here. So you have to manage the data stored and you have to decide what data will be stored and what data needs to be deleted archived or purged this is your responsibility as a customer so a is wrong b says aws manages the maintenance of the operating system yes in case of rds aws does that 
uh, for traditional database you have to do it so this is an advantage b could be an op potential option c says aws automatically scales up instance types on demand so this is something which uh, not totally true uh, it it from a performance standpoint it scales up but not the instance types uh, d says aws manages the database type no uh, database type is something which you have already chosen under rds if you choose mysql that is a database type which you have chosen uh, so it is not something which amazon does it for you so option b looks to be the right answer so let's move to the next question so which service is best for storing common database query results which helps to alleviate database access load so this is like it is a question which is linked to caching because if there are common database queries being fired by multiple users so he's asking which service is best for storing those common database queries so that it elevates database access load that means it should improve the performance of the access so it is to do with query caching let's look at the options we have machine learning which is very different it is used to build ml models not linked with database query results amazon sqs so this is a message queuing service it is uh, somewhat like uh, streaming stuff similar to kinesis so this is wrong Elastic cache looks to right to be right here in this case because it caches the database uh, query results and it improves performance for the end users if uh, the same similar database queries are being fired multiple times. And EC2 instance store is is not a service which stores the database common database query results. It is used to host applications its its purpose is very different so d is also wrong so let's quickly look at elastic cache so if you see this elastic cache allows you to seam seamlessly set up run and scale popular open source compatible in memory data stores okay so it boosts the performance of your existing databases by retrieving the data from high throughput low latency in memory data stores so it's an in memory caching thing the and that is very useful for what are the use cases for gaming for storing session stores real time analytics queuing etc let's quickly look at uh, what are the different types here if you see elastic cache for redis elastic cache for memcached these are the two products which is available um if you see the architecture here the client accesses elastic cache and elastic cache is put before mongodb cassandra other database and file stores or s3 or rds so that way what happens is when the client here it is trying to fire the queries the query goes here and it says hey you know if the result already available it says hey i already have the results so the the results are sent back to the client instead of you know sending the query to the database and the database processes and sends it back if this is already holding those result sets it will send it to the client the client gets better performance faster response time low latency and the processing on database is also reduced in this case because elastic cache did the caching so who are the customers of elastic cache who are you know using day in and day out peloton airbnb so on So it's absolutely clear amazon elastic cache is the right answer for this one let's look at the next one which of the following is a component of the shared responsibility model managed entirely by aws so it is asking for which of these is purely an aws responsibility so patching operating system software uh potentially but this is more of a customer responsibility once you have 
the EC2 instance and suppose you have a Linux operating system six months down the line or one year down the line or three months down the line the patching exercise you will be responsible as a customer to, to do that hence a looks to be wrong encrypting data this is also uh, a customer responsibility because you have to choose whether you want to encrypt it using KMS or your own client side encryption keys etc so B looks doesn't look correct it's wrong C says enforcing multi-factor authentication now whether you want to enforce multi-factor authentication or not this is purely uh, customers choice AWS doesn't have a role to play here so C is wrong D says auditing physical data center assets so this is AWS responsibility uh, because the physical data center assets is owned by AWS there will be security guards who would check the IDs of the auditors and the, as a customer you don't have a role to play there so D looks to be correct in this case So if each department within a company has its own AWS account, what is one way to enable consolidated billing? So basically it is asking for a mechanism where suppose there is a company and they just get one bill. Even if there are multiple accounts, AWS accounts in the company, they should get one bill. So the first option says use AWS budgets on each account to pay all need to budget. So what I understand is budget is just a threshold. If you set a budget of ten thousand dollars, okay, suppose the finance department of a company has set this budget for his department, and this budget is maybe for three months or four months if this threshold is exceeded or touched the an alert will be sent so this is a different service so this seems to, to be wrong b says contact aws support for monthly bill no need to do that because uh, option c is i mean this looks to be the right option b is wrong we don't have to contact support c says create an aws organization from the pair account and invite others to join this looks to be correct d says put all invoices into one s3 bucket load data into amazon redshift and then run a billing report so you don't have to go go that route you don't have to walk extra miles uh, AWS organization does that so let's look at how AWS organization does this so you see this there's a topic on this documentation AWS so this is for consolidated billing process if you see the billing process it tells the same thing it says to go to the org console and then create an organization create organization from the account that you want the management account of your view so you, there will be a parent account from where you will create this organization and then it says either you create new accounts for the members or you invite existing accounts to join this organization so this is exactly what the answer option suggests so the answer suggests that to create an aws organization from the payer account and invite other accounts to join so that's perfectly correct so this brings me to the end of part 5 please like my video and subscribe to my channel